Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the Renee Allen and Friends Show. To the Renee Allen and Friends Show. We have a wonderful guest in the studio. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome. Right. Mwah. Miss Renee. Hi, I'm show. Dr. Renee Starlin Allen, the host of the Renee Allen and Friends Show here on WLVS Radio, the largest online Ms. radio broadcast Renee in the United States. Well, you know, this platform is for people to really know what's going on, you know, not just locally, but globally. Oh, I love it. You know, they say you're the, the man's the head, but we're the neck. We like, we put them wherever we want to put them. Is that true? Yes, ma'am, it is. <laughs> I want you to just talk about a few pieces okay. and then the fundraiser, because that's what I'm excited about. Okay. Because <laughs> we forgot about love. Beautiful love. Bringing you the best in entertainment, entrepreneurship, business owners, the whole gamut. It's so exciting. I am so impressed. The vibrancy in the car and the details. Can we hold one up? Oh, absolutely. I'll hold on. Oh, I'll goodness. hold up one of my absolute favorites. So you really can't judge a book by its cover. And pageants are about beauty and brains and what you can bring to the platform. Because girl, when you're here. Yes, I need you. Everything Bringing you the finest in chefs in the DMV. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow, this is mm. awesome. Thank mm. you so much. Smoke, mm. pork, pork. Mm. So everybody wave to your parents. <laughs> you are looking at Somerset's finest, the sophisticated ladies. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. And I hope to see you on my set one day. Thank you. God bless you. And we're going to be doing a lot of collaboration and a lot of great things together. Glory to God. Bam! Boom! Cut out! Oh, yeah! We right here, y'all. Something you never had, you need to do something you've never done. Yes. yes. We gonna sing right here. Miss Renee Show. Yeah! Miss Renee. Oh, yeah! We gonna do it here. Right here in Listen Vision, y'all. Oh, yeah. Miss Renee. I like how you sing it. Thank you, Mustafa. Girl, I like how you sing it now. Thank you, Mustafa. And where we at now? Miss Renee Show. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Renee Allen and Friends Show. Thank you for tuning in. What a wonderful evening outside in the nation's capital right across from Howard University. H U, you know. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Listen, it is Black History Month tomorrow, and we're kicking it off today on the Renee Allen and Friends Show on January 31st, and I have some beautiful guests with a, a wonderful story and a, a mission to get some things done in, in Kansas City. So we're going to really, really be serious on this show today about a plight for black history. And um, I don't think that you heard about it because I never heard about this. This is something that is very, very unique. And I have to give it to the Afro, Edgar Brookins, who is the general manager of the Washington, D.C. Metro Office of Afro-American Newspapers. And I think, yes, it's on the banner today, yes, along with Global Ava Day seminary and university where you can get earned an honorary doctorate. So give me a call or inbox me or send me an email to Renee Allen and friends at gmail.com. Well, we have a few things here. Um, we're going to start off with PNC, the Power Networking Conference. Um, I believe we have George Frazier's picture. Yeah, right there. Oh, my goodness. Listen, this is what Forbes Magazine calls one of the top conferences not to miss. Um, that should hit the, uh, the nail on the head right there. It is a conference for expiring entrepreneurs and business owners that want to take their business to the next step or just, you know, help that trajectory going on a little bit so you can really um, put some money into your business and give it some net worth. So um, George C. Frazier is the founder of FrazierNet and the Power Networking Conference. There he is. Love that man. And he loves the community, and he's helping us as far as economic power and bridging the gaps and connecting the dots. So I want you to go to Google 
And just Google Connect the Dots, George C. Frazier. That's F-R-A-S-E-R, no I, no Z, and you will be amazed as I was about seven years ago when I first saw that. I also, oh, it's actually going to be on July, I believe, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th at the Gaylord on the National Harbor. It's going to be amazing. So please call us about that, thepowernetworkingconference.com. Get in while it's a little cheaper. Uh, as it gets closer, it's going to be more expensive, but it's worth every single penny. And we had, um, I have a picture with the women of Prince George's County, uh, Stephanie Bolton James is a phenomenal woman there with the yellow flower. And she's edifying. You know you know what I like to do here on the show, this platform. She likes to educate, inspire, empower women all over the globe. And there were a few men there this, this last conference last week. And, of course, Dr. Jennifer Jones, uh, the chair of the um, Women's Commission of Prince George's County, uh, who also um, used to um, have a show here. I think it was called 360. So kudos to her, Dr. Dr. Jennifer Jones. Also, Everett Hall, black-owned business uh, on Wisconsin Avenue, right across from Neiman Marcus, and he has a superb a superb boutique for men, uh, and I, I recommend it to, to everyone, plus to support your brother. Look at that suit. I mean, that would turn my head um, if you were wearing it. <laughs> and of course, this beautiful, beautiful work with Everett Hall on, on Wisconsin Avenue and DC's own. Uh, and that reminds me, we have Work It Wednesday right here in WLVS Studio. And we have two dynamic designers right here if you want to come on down to the studio. 2622 Georgia Avenue, right across from Howard University, and come check these guys out. Some really great stuff over here. Um, also, Novetica, that is going to uh, be a business that is going to be launched. Yes, your pet's choice. And that is um, the one and only Mr. Lance London, the um, CEO and founder of the Carolina Kitchen, where you get your chicken and much, much more. Yes. And so uh, that is amazing. Uh, that is an opportunity of a lifetime. And you can also inbox me about that. Uh, I have some things on. Yeah, there they go. There he is in front of the crowd. Uh, what a wonderful man of integrity. You won't find uh, many more like him. He's very dedicated to humanity. He pours into the earth. He wants to empower the community. Um, just an amazing man. Uh, love him in life. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, the Afro-American newspaper, of course, we have it on the banner. I love this newspaper. Um, Edgar Brookings is, is one of the most loved and beloved men in the D.C. Uh, metro area, and he just really just edifies everyone and and um, really tries to get the, the right news into the into the newspaper so we can, you know, be empowered and know what's going on in our communities. Um, so kudos to the Afro. Well, listen, we're going to take a short break, and I'll be right back with two dynamic powerhouse veterans who are doing some dynamic things. And I'll give you one hint. It involves World War II. Don't go anywhere. Let me redeem myself.
Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Renee Allen and Friends Show. Um, we, I'm excited, y'all. It's um, Black History Month starting tomorrow. We're kicking it off today in a grand way with two dynamic powerhouse women. And I just want you to introduce yourselves, um, just who you are and, and what you stand for before we get into everything so I don't mess it up. Oh, you <laughs> Hi, I'm Edna Cummings, originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina, also you know known as Vietnam to some of you know, who know who I'm talking about. Um, and I was born into a military family, so I joined after college. I tell everyone I joined the family business. Grew up on military bases, Fort Bragg, lived at Fort Stewart, I think, for a while, and my dad was in. And my father is 90 years old. Wow. wow. Yes, and uh, doing well. Sometimes Lord he walks God. three times around Cross Creek Mall in Fayetteville. Wow. So pretty wow. active. But that was a lot of my inspiration. Mm -hmm. World War II occupation force, mm -hmm. two tours of Vietnam, Korean War, and other places the 82nd didn't talk about. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> it was just something I was used to. Yeah. And, um, you know, growing up, I said, okay, I think when I was a senior in high school, they started, you know, increasing opportunities mm -hmm. for women. Yeah. And I said, I'm, I'm not going to join the military. My dad said, no, you're not. He said, you're going to go to college. <laughs> so I said, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> I can go to college, join the military, and that's what I did. I was in the Army RTC program at Appalachian wow. State. Wow. And, um, you know, different assignments, Fort Rucker, Korea. And when I retired, I retired out of Colorado Springs at NORAD Northcom and came back to the D.C. area. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, you know, I worked around the Beltway helping companies pursue government contracts. Yes. And I met uh, the project director, Carlton Fieldpot, maybe in the 90s. And so this organization called The Rocks, mm -hmm. it's an organization that mentors you know, young officers who teach leadership. And they had something on their website you know, about this organization. And so I called Carlton. I said, um, Commander Philpot, you remember me? He says, no. <laughs> <laughs> he says, no, ma'am. I said, well, um, I see you're still involved with the Buffalo Soldiers, and um, I sent a donation. How can I help? He says, well, what can you do? Mm -hmm. I said, well, so make a long story short, we spoke for maybe an hour and a half. Wow. He laid out his program for me, what he's doing, and he said, well, we need an East Coast subcommittee. All right, now. And so now <laughs> okay, <laughs> we have an East Coast subcommittee official, you know, with our uh, pins, yes. and uh, you are official member now. Yes! Yes! <laughs> 
to all you army veterans out there, she has a hua pin. So let's right. right. yeah, hua. hua. Yeah, hua. there you go. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so you now oh, have a hua pin. Oh, this, I'm going to put it on. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Thank you, lady. So um, I'll talk to you about the subcommittee, who's on it. And yes. again, as you mentioned earlier, thanks to Edgar Brookings because oh. I reached out to his, his team. Yes. And he said, we can do this. Yes. And so as a testament and to I further iterate, you know, what you said about him, yes. he's just a wonderful, you know, individual. He's helping us with some of the, um, you know, publicity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's going to do a spread, you know, for Black History Month in the newspaper. Yes. Um, I'll introduce Liz later, but also on the team is uh, the director is a Carlton Field Park retired Navy. <laughs> we'll speak with him later, I understand. <laughs> yes, we're going to call him. And uh, he has a vice chairman, Dominique Johnson, who is also in Kansas. Awesome. So they're in the Midwest. Okay. And so here on the East Coast, uh, we have Edgar. He's on our yes. team. And we have a great individual. Uh, his name is Rodney Minor. He mm -hmm. uh, does uh, work for the... Uh, W H U T the uh, oh, right yes. across the street right across the yes. street and he has a fantastic program called Veterans in Transition wow. and so Carlton is going to come here and he's going to do a piece for Carlton and so uh, we'll keep you posted on yes, that ma'am so a good thing and we have a lady who didn't join us her name is Marion uh, with just retired from the army okay Marion <laughs> so Marion yes. if you're out there watching <laughs> hi. hi and. Uh, I'll let uh, Liz introduce your, herself and tell you something about her story, and then we'll come back to the project. Sure, I would okay. love to. Yes, yes. All right. Well, thank you, Edna. Thank you, Renee, for inviting us. My name is Elizabeth Ann Helm Frazier, mm -hmm. and I grew up uh, in Largo, Florida, Ridgecrest community. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> my dad was in the military, but he mm -hmm. didn't stay long. He was in the um, um, Korean War. And his brother actually was in the military and stayed um, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so I was one of those students in high school that when the recruiter came around, I was running away. Because I was like, <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with this. And yeah. then like two years later, because I couldn't find a job, I was like, okay, I, I need to go ahead and make you this gave move. A, you gave in. You know? You gave in. <laughs> and my grandfather, the late Johnny Davenport, was a cook in World War II. Oh my God. And he was actually my... Um, motivator because my mom was not happy the day that I joined the military okay she no, made like not. 12 calls in two minutes and they didn't even have redial at the time <laughs> but um, turns out that, that my mom said to me this was a great move for you and so 25 years 10 months and 26 days later wow okay in three seconds <laughs> I, yeah. I retired from the U.S. Army in um, October of 2006. Wonderful. Um, and I got involved with um, women veterans programs because um, women veterans need a voice. Yes, ma'am. so I got yes. involved, and I am a current member of the Northern Virginia Chapter 33 Women's Army Corps. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that is how I actually began to learn the history mm -hmm. of, of women veterans, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, I had been in the service five years before I met my first really female senior non-commissioned officer. Mm -hmm. Five years I had five been in the years. service. Mm -hmm. And her name is Theola Milton, and it's actually who I modeled my career after. So thank you, Theola. Yes, Theola. Um, <clears throat> but I got involved and began to learn about what women did in the military. Mm -hmm. And then I met an amazing woman. Her name was Major Blanche Scott. And so I'm always going to refer to her as Major Scott. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Um, this is her. This is the picture that okay. she... Um, is she in the blue? She's in the blue. Okay. I'm in that other color oh, yes, right yes, there. Yes. Uh, and she was a member <laughs> of the 6888 Central wow. Postal um, Battalion. Right. And, and we'll they, be talking about that. And too. they were um, the first and only all black female unit to serve overseas mm -hmm. in World War II. And they did. The third most important job over there, yes, if you ask any military person, Drum male, 
<laughs> nails <laughs> was the most important thing yes, after ma'am. food and getting paid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. I, I began yes. to learn the history and then um, was just fascinated by it. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, I got a note from somebody saying, oh, yeah, you might be interested in this. And I, like Edna, I made a donation. Uh-huh. And then I, you know, never ask a military person, do you need some help? That's right. right. No. Like, no. Yeah. Absolutely. What and so Mr. Philpot, Commander Philpot, yes. mm-hmm. we talked and he was like, you on board. Matter of fact, I'm going to hook you up with somebody that, that stay on the, right there where you stay at. Because we, we don't stay too far from each other. Wow. And you all can be Look the East God. Coast right. subcommittee. There you East go. Coast yes. subcommittee. East Coast Midwest. And so that's how I got involved. And I will actually say, I already thought that the 6888 had a monument. I already wow. thought that. Mm-hmm. But I am so glad to be on the on the team, yes. on the project mm-hmm. that is going to get these women their final due. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, that's um, a good segue. We'll, we'll change the um, agenda a little bit, and we'll talk about that. And we can call the commander and then um, go into the video and some other things okay. with the, with the um, 100-year-old, right? Um, but, Edna, uh, thank you so much, ladies, for being here, because this is so important, mm-hmm. especially being... Uh, three black veterans, you know. Um, let's talk about how this all came about. Okay. Well, first of all, it's the six triple eight Central Postal Directed Battalion. Yes. You see that? Okay. And so we're here to now talk about the monument project. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Wonderful. the monument will be located at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and it's in an area with several monuments mm-hmm. um, called the Circle of Firsts. I mean, mm-hmm. in that, yeah, I probably can't remember all this. There are six monuments already. It'll be the seventh. We have folks like General Powell's uh, bus yes. there, Roscoe Robinson, yes, uh, Triple Nickel, and there's one from the Buffalo Soldier, yes. and I think General Greason, and I, I may be leaving someone out, <laughs> but I'm sure Carlton can fill you in. Yes. But this is an artist's rendering to pay tribute to these ladies. It was, uh, the commander was a charity Edna Adams uh, early. And so when I saw her name, I'm like, okay, it's a, it's a divine calling. Supposed <laughs> I'm supposed to be here. Her name is Edna. Yes. And everyone has an Aunt Edna, you know, or Grandmother yeah. Edna. Yeah. It's a good Southern name. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but she was the highest ranking black um, female officer, African-American female officer in World War II, yes. in World War II. So you think World War II, mid-40s, hmm. okay, after the Depression, yeah. and Eleanor Roosevelt and Mary McLeod Bethune hmm. convinced the president, says, look, we have some talent out here. I'm paraphrasing, of course, yes, so yes, for you yes. historians. Mm-hmm. We have talent out here, and black women can do this. Mm-hmm. And so can you imagine mm-hmm. how it is now if you don't get a text or you don't get an email, say, within you know, t- 10, 15 minutes or a day. Mm-hmm. Mail was backed up for months. Mm-hmm. And so you had approximately, the numbers range between 800, 855 black women in the mid-40s mm-hmm. who crossed the ocean. And literally, I said, they parted the seas for people like us to go through. Yes, right. yes. And so when they got there, it was uh, two aircraft hangars full of mail. You know, for those of you who not familiar with regular mail, you know, envelopes, letter, mm-hmm. people wrote letters, and that's how you communicated. And I don't think a lot of them are familiar with the aircraft carrier, so you might that's want right. to say how big they are. Yeah, a hangar, <laughs> just, um, what's, a super Walmart, maybe? <laughs> with a big, I'm this trying to put it in context. One airplane. One airplane, <laughs> yeah. right. Think imagine of an airplane. A, foot, a football field. That's right. With a cover over it. Yes. So imagine a professional yes. football field. With the cover, that's a good with analogy. They're huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Full of mail. From from the ground to the ceiling, mm. Yes. Mm. every mm. single space had mail. Yeah. Mm. Okay. About what, 7 and million pieces? About 7 million, seven million. Wow. pieces. And, okay, now remember, this is World War II. Yeah. Okay. In the mm-hmm. And so 40s. Um, a lot of people would just address the mail, Junior, U.S. Army. <laughs> You're right. Okay. <laughs> junior. <laughs> or like Mr. um John Brown, Mr. Robert Smith. Smith. Yeah. Okay. US Army. Mm. Okay. And these women <laughs> in three shifts. That's right. S- seven days a week 
went in and sorted that mail because right. oh mail, if you don't get mail, you, you the morale, you, yeah, yeah, you're not happy, okay. Yeah. And these women went in because it was a backlog, mm -hmm. okay. These women went in and got the mail out. Can you imagine? Let me ask you a question, you millennials <laughs> out there. <laughs> Somebody send you a, a tweet, text, whatever it is, how y'all do, okay? How y'all do, no, you can't. <laughs> and y'all don't get an answer back. So what do you do? Okay, y'all might go into spasm. I know, because I got a friend out there. She's like that. Yeah. If she don't get her answer back, like, like a half a zillion second, she starts going into this spasm. And I'd be like, well, what is wrong with you? Oh, yeah, answer my email. She, I text her. I'm, okay, well, don't you have to go through, like, cyberspace or something? <laughs> Serious here. Okay. So imagine that. Now imagine that mail. Okay? And you ain't get no mail. I can tell you right now, when I was overseas and I didn't get no mail, boy, I'd be calling and that call cost my mother because I put it on her. Why didn't I get some mail? Because <laughs> I was upset. Why didn't I get some mail? Because mail was your connection to home. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Yeah. Mail was your connection you to home to say, it's okay, so no. so right. <laughs> it is all right. Somebody at home is thinking about me. Okay. And I got we'll, a lot we'll, of it. Bring it back. Come on. Bring it, <laughs> bring, bring, bring it on back. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you I, remember. <laughs> I remember in boot camp when they you said mail call, call. <laughs> if you didn't get a care package oh, or a yeah. card or something, you felt unloved. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah, okay. I remember. So, so these women led by Miss, you know, she was a major at the time, Major Edna. Edna. And so she said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have three shifts 24-7. In other words, nonstop. And I read something from a book, uh, One Woman's Army, and it said, uh, I think someone, some senior officer, you know, white officer said, we're going to bring a white officer down here to show you how to get it done. She said, over my dead body. Mm -hmm. So here it is, this wow. black woman in mid 40s in uniform in Europe, standing up. Well, you know, we're strong now. <laughs> yes, right. Strong up. then, strong now, strong yeah. winner. <laughs> so just saying, you know, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And they, you know, reduced the male backlog in record time. Wow. Yes. Yeah, but the sad part about it, when they came back to the United States, mm -hmm. there was no parade, no recognition, mm -hmm. very similar to the way our soldiers were treated during Vietnam, mm -hmm. and you, we vowed never to do that again mm -hmm. in recent conflicts, and so, you know, that's why this monument is so timely yeah. now, you know, to be Beautiful. around the circle of first, yeah. to recognize these women who, like I said, you know, made it possible for all of yes. us to sit here yes. today. So, That's yes, right. glory to God. Right. Yes. My goodness. Yes. Well, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> <laughs> because comedian over here <laughs> had us all gone. I know. going to give you a stand-up mic. <laughs> but we'll be back with okay. more. We're going to take a short break. We're going to talk about some things that went on um, the state of the city with Mayor mm -hmm. uh, Eugene W. Grant. And then we're going to hear more from these wonderful ladies. Be right back. <laughs>
Back to the Renee Allen Friends Show. We are having a wonderful kickoff of Black History Month here uh, with Edna Cummings and Elizabeth Helm Frazier with the 6888th. Uh, and you'll know what that means in a minute if you're just tuning in. Uh, but first, I want to talk about uh, some things we did over the week. And one was I sat in as a guest host on Vox um, Four Sisters Live Radio right there with Peggy Morris of Sisters Four Sisters Network and my. Wyomi and uh, Linda and all the great people. We had a wonderful time. So I wanted to give a shout out to the Sisters, Four Sisters Network Incorporated. All right. The other thing was my, my, my. This mayor of Seat Pleasant, which is Mayor Eugene W. Grant, is a phenomenal trailblazing leader. He had the state of the city, uh, which is the smart city of excellence. And uh, there were five commentators, of course, Joe Claire right there with me uh, from WPGC, uh, Denise Roberts from CTV. Uh, we had Tara Gates Anderson, also Ebony McMorris from Radio One. So the five of us were the Smart City Five uh, media panel. It was amazing. It is known as the Smart City out of 157 seven municipalities it is the one number one that's leading in smart city technology and so forth i'm so proud of mayor eugene w grant i just want to give him a big shout out sir bam boom pat <laughs> all right thank you jacob well back to these phenomenal ladies and we have someone on the line i'm going to have edna actually introduce because i just met him and he's I already fell in love with him over the phone. He's such a nice guy. But um, this initiative that they're doing, for anyone who's just tuning in, can you just give them a small synopsis, Edna? Yeah. So we are here to ask for your help to build monu this monument. Uh, monument cost is about you know, 70000 and we are about halfway there. And it's to honor the women of the 6th Triple Eighth Central Postal Directory Battalion. And it'll be in uh, at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. So the project yeah. director is uh, Carlton Fieldpot, who's on the phone now. Yes, Carlton? yes, yes, yes. Sure. Carlton, are you there, Carlton? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm here. I'm sitting here with your finest on the <laughs> East Coast. <laughs> Two fine Army veterans, uh, women, women of power and um, honor and courage. And um, they were speaking so much about you, sir. Can you tell us what's going on in Kansas and your part on the um, Midwest region? Yes. Go ahead, sir. You there? I'm here. Oh, okay. So uh, uh, let us know what you're doing on the um, Midwest. We have your picture up, and we'd love to hear about this wonderful project, the 6888. Can you hear him? Can you hear us? You showed a certificate back looking thing now. Okay, go ahead. We hear you. So, Good evening, Ms. Allen. How are you doing? I'm great, sir. How are you? You're Sorry for the technical difficulties. Hello, sir. How are you? Doing just great. It's nice to see the uh, East Coast committed for the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He forgot me. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Could you tell us um, why you're so dedicated and so steadfast about getting this statue up in Kansas City? Right, we're just, uh, it's just two of us, myself and Dominique Johnson. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You probably want to turn off your radio because it's, delay it's delaying you. Oh, okay. It's a wonderful project. It's nice seeing Cummings and Master Sergeant. Uh, yes, it's nice seeing the two ladies for the first time. 
and I want to thank them. And uh, and Marion Robinson worked with us 25 years ago on the Buffalo Soldier Project, and I have listening my vice chair. No problem. Can you still hear me? Yeah, you probably want to turn off your um, radio or the um, online because it's it's um, confusing you and it's delaying you. Um, so turn that off if you don't mind, so we can hear you live. I turn it off, and uh, yes, and uh, we have Major Dominique Johnson, our vice chairman and research, and we have uh, Keith Pope, our webmaster, listening in Florida. Awesome. This is Thank a you, great sir. Project. And uh, I heard about these ladies about 15 years or so when they had a convention in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, finally got a chance to do this project. And it's a very nice project, much needed. And I fell in love with a lady named Millie Dunn VC out of Raleigh, North Carolina. She's uh, 100 years old today. Miss VC and her family, happy birthday. And I'm flying out Friday to go go visit in that area and, and go do some other things. But Ms. Allen, thank you very much. Colonel Cummins and uh, Master Sergeant, thank you very much. Marion, thank you for joining in to help us once again. Yes, they, they have been. <laughs> These uh, ladies of 6888, uh, they need this recognition. And uh, these are good role models for anyone mm -hmm. to know their history and to, set, to go to Europe dodging uh, submarines as they went across the ocean, getting in Europe being treated as second-class citizen and doing delivering first-class work, first-class yes, service. Sir. It is great. And mm -hmm. the monument that you're looking at is about six feet across, four feet deep, about four and, a half, four and a half feet tall, and the bronze statue will be 36 inches high. And our sculptor is Eddie Dixon out of Lubbock, Texas. He's a fine sculptor. He's done all our sculptor work. And so the project is around 70000 And our biggest challenge, other than money, is awareness. And your show is helping us uh, cut that challenge down because I think the more that people know, they will give to honor and celebrate these ladies. Uh, our theme is $68.88 for the 6888. Celebrate the 6888 with $68.88 or whatever you can afford. I love it. I love it, sir. And uh, so we're about halfway there, and hopefully your listeners will join in and donate to this project. And uh, we hope to dedicate it sometime in the fall. Yes, And sir. maybe mid to late September if we can get the money raised. We really need to get it done by the end of May because uh, fabricating, fabricating, fabricating the black granite panels is going to take about 90 days. And then once we raise all the money, we have to send a letter up to the Secretary of the Army requesting permission to uh, build the monument. And you can't build it, uh, get the request permission until you get the money. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. And we have some wonderful companies working for us. We've been working with some companies 25 years. We're on the third generation uh, with these companies, the grandfather, the father, and the granddaughter, and the grandson. And everybody's just been so grateful, to, so gracious to us especially with in-kind services in the local area. Yes, and sir. Is, uh, our webmasters donated so much in-kind service to our websites and our Facebook site. That's amazing. Well, you know, the Afro-American newspaper uh, who connected me with all of you, wonderful, dedicated um, veterans and, and uh, just, my goodness, I, I just can't say enough about you. Um, meeting these wonderful ladies. We had a ball. One of them's a comedian. I won't say who. <laughs> she had us all crying. <laughs> but this is such an awesome mission, and we're going to get that money for you. I actually brought in um, a gentleman who does consulting with um, bringing people together and connecting people for fundraising, and his name is Freddie um, is Ola. He just left for Nashville, but the ladies got no, to... Oh, you're, you're right here? Oh, come <laughs> here. I thought you left for Nashville. Okay, come here, come here, come here, come here. I want you to talk to... This is the co commander retired, but it's... Um, He's a project director. Project director. Yes. And, and yeah, let me just take this off. And so just let him know what you can do in a, in a minute or two, what you um, are willing to try to do for this project, sir. Absolutely. So I had the opportunity tonight to hear the heart of these two beautiful women um, <laughs> about 
their endeavor. And so I'm willing to partner with you guys immediately. Um, I am the biggest proponent in the world of passion. I feel like that is what sells anything on this planet. Oh, my bad. I'll look over here. Uh, <laughs> that is what sells everything on the planet. So quick background. Um, I started my first business when I was 16. Uh, by the time I was 22, I went $100,000 in debt, uh, starting another business. I talked my way out of that. I became a mega church pastor at 25. Um, I just got divorced three months ago, lost everything, but I moved to D.C. five weeks ago, and I have 18 businesses. So that's how I get down. Um, I like to raise money for organizations <laughs> yeah, that I believe yeah, in. That's what we're talking and so about. my goal this year is to raise my clients $500 million, which will pay me out pretty hefty. I'm trying to retire by the end of the year. So that's how I get that. We're all volunteers. Yeah, all yeah absolutely. So I'm gonna take care of y'all. I'm gonna take care of y'all. But that's my plan. Absolute yeah. pleasure. I just met Dr. Renee like two days ago. Yeah. She's already my sister. I love her to death. Um, I'm super proud of you guys. Yes. I'm the biggest proponent in the world of what you're doing, and I would be honored to partner with you. Thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. So we Appreciate can all that. thank. Yes, man. We can all thank Edgar Brookins for this um, connection here because it take you know it takes people and networking right. to connect. Mm -hmm. And so, sir, um, I want to ask you so. Um, what I know you must have heartfelt feelings about this, but what do you want to share with our viewers in, in retrospect as to why you really got involved with this being a man and this being a woman's plight? It's about... I can't, I can't hear too well. Oh, I was saying, I wanted to know your... Uh, we know that you are dedicated and committed to this uh, project, but what really did it for you being a man in this women's plight and mission? What really um, brought you on, on board so committed? This is, uh, this is our, this is our second, this is our second, this is our, we can hear you. This is our seventh project that we've done in the last 28 years. And the, uh, First one was the Buffalo Soldier, 13 foot horse and rider statue, the first black paratrooper, the triple nickel, mm -hmm. uh, General Roscoe Robinson, the first four star general, Lieutenant Flipper, the first graduate of West Point. My God. And we did one to the female Buffalo Soldier, the only uh, known woman to serve. She served as the Buffalo Soldier as a man. And this project just needs to be done. The Buffalo Soldiers were the first to serve in peacetime, although African Americans have fought in every conflict this country has had. And these ladies are the first to serve overseas in the first group of whites. So that's a nice historical connection. Yes. And it's about service to the country, not about the gender per se. They deserve it. They earned it. They need to be celebrated. And the world needs to know what they have done, what they have done. Their families need to know that we appreciate them. And we're focusing on the project itself, their achievements and their contribution and sacrifices. Yes. And so, uh, like I said, I fell in love with them uh, about 17 years ago, 15 years or so. I can't remember when I first met them in Kansas City. And so this is our last project on this end. Thank you, but, sir. Um, so that's what we're doing. And we do have uh, corporate contributors can give at least $6,688.88 and get their name on the donors marked on the monument. You can see that on the front side. Yes. And we're, li we're listening at the latest names on the back. Of the 855, we only have a little over 700. And so in addition to uh, increasing awareness about these ladies, we are trying to identify any living members of the 6888. And since we started this project, we've located five. Wonderful. I've talked with uh, four of them. And I'd like to say, Miss Millie Dunn, Visa Raleigh, North Carolina, is 100 years old today. Give a yes. shout out to her. Happy and, uh, birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we are right now. And thank you, sir. We need sponsorship. Carlton Philpott, thank you so much for calling in and, and um, being um, the man uh, leading the way on the the Midwest Coast, sir. We really, really applaud and honor you. We're going to actually end the show with a small video if we can pull it up. Um, or wishing uh, Millie, Millie, uh... Let's stay focused on the women. Yes. And uh, paintbrush don't get much credit for the Sistine Chapel. Chapel. It's the ladies who deserve all the credit. It's those yes. men and women who fought in the military. Our mission is to honor African-American military units and individuals who have made significant sacrifices for this country and people don't know much about them. Yes, So sir. have a great week, Ms. Allen. I hope you join the team with us and 
let your listeners know about this and how we're doing and get them to encourage to donate so we can get, raise this money by May 31st. I'm on board. I'm on board. Thank you board. for Colonel Cummings and Master Chief and uh, Marion, <laughs> uh, Dominique Johnson, and Keith Pope out of Tampa, Florida. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen much. from Tampa as Thank well. You. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. I'm on board, sir. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, good night. Oh, what a great man. Listen, mm-hmm. I want to do we have the picture of her with President Obama? There's a pit no. Um, let's talk about Millie uh, while I try to find the picture so he can put it up and, and share with the, the listeners the actual one of the members mm-hmm. who's 100 years old. So, Miss, I don't know a lot about her. I was just introduced to her story a uh, few days ago. But Millie Dunvisi was a member of the 6888, and she turns 100 years old, and from Raleigh, North Carolina, and she was also, if I'm not mistaken, the first, uh, she was president of the NAACP at Raleigh Mm -hmm. at one point. She's a Zeta, so uh, to all you Zetas out there, you have a true (laughs) legacy, and it's just, you know, a, a legacy of service and I don't want to uh, be too premature with some things, but um, I have to extend my utmost gratitude to the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. Yes. You know, I sent them an email and called, and they're calling me back, so we are awesome. working to do something to uh, honor her. Yes. Not exactly yes. sure. You know, I don't want to announce something that's mm-hmm. not exactly. taking fruition, but it's just... It's a great time that we're all coming together. Yes, ma'am. And so, Miss Jordan over at CBCF, thank you so much. Wow. I look forward to meeting you soon. And so, Miss VZ, um, I don't know if you have any relatives or any Zetas out there. <laughs> thank you so much for your service and for you know making it possible for me to sit here. You know, 100 years yeah. old, that's an accomplishment within yes. itself. Yes. So you think about it, she's 100 years old. She's a World War II veteran. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Zeta, and a, mem- a member of this unit working in aircraft hangars in Europe. Wow. And Bayola. Yeah. I'd so, love to get her picture up. So I thought I sent it, but I didn't. Let me see if this I one's up. Do you have it? Could you? Book. You do? My oh, well, let's. Okay. There. Over here. Let's you want me to get that, it? See that army book over there? Oh, yeah. Yes. You brought right your army book I'm with my you? My army book. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, please. Let's at least show them. All right. Come up there. We're going to have a army. Yeah, and I downloaded I don't know what happened. Okay. But she actually received something from um, President Obama, right? Here we go. That's right. This was in 2009 Ooh, during a town hall meeting. I believe it was there at it Fort Lee, Virginia. Yeah. And so yes. this lady, you know, saluting. Is saluting the commander in chief. Yes. At, at the Number time. 44. How about that? Yeah, you know. So I'm, I'm going to ask everybody out there that hears our voice. Yes. Let's honor, honor this yes. 688 veteran. By everybody making a donation of six dollars and eighty eight cents. Yes. Let's yes. do that for her birthday. Yes. Can we get one hundred right. people to donate six dollars and eighty eight cents? Or if you can do some more, that's good 68 too. Sixty eight eighty eight. But right. let's six dollars eighty eight or sixty eight eighty eight. Either one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let Let's honor her. She's one hundred yes. today. Let's get one hundred people. You see the website there. Yes. You can mail it in. You can mail it in. You can go to the website because you know I know y'all been learning all these. I like to go on the and, website. And so how, I did the hashtags. Yeah. You know the hashtag six triple eight ww two hashtag That's block awesome. wax. Yeah. Will bring you to everything to Facebook and Twitter. I have my cousin to teach me about hashtagging and trending yeah. and all that stuff. So shout out to Candace. Thank you at well, Georgetown yes, Hospital. Yes, and it's time to go. So oh my here we go. Well, look, please support Thank them. You, right. um, give her your, your number or just something last so we can end the show so they can get a hold of you. Or just, you know what? Yeah, just the Ray website. Allen and Friends show. Yes. Yes. Thank you so you much go. for tuning in. Thank you, ladies, sure. for this wonderful kickoff to Black History <laughs> Month. And stay tuned for your next show. You know the diva. <laughs> She's in the building. <laughs> See you okay. next week. Miss Renee. Hi, I'm Dr. Renee Starlin Allen, the host of the Renee Allen and Friends Show here on WLVS Radio, the largest online radio broadcast in the United States.